Okay, so here are the quick practice slides. We're going to start with the place value poster. Uh, whether you have it up in your room, you display this slide. Uh, I would advise maybe giving students a copy. You can find the colored version in the back of the teacher edition in the teacher resource section. But students will use this as a scaffold during the quick practices. So if you notice students are struggling with remember the coin, remembering the coin, remembering which fraction to write, then I think this chart will be that support that they need to work through the quick practices. So on day one, we're just going to introduce it again, remind them of the chart, maybe hold a very brief conversation of the things they notice, and then move on to the actual quick practice. So here we go for slides, uh, or this is for lessons two and three. And I have a arrow here, so you can use the arrow as your pointer, or I'm going to use my other pointer, and mine's called Pointer Focus, and I just downloaded it to my computer, but I prefer it specifically when I'm teaching remotely. So boys and girls, read the, uh, read the number, 0 and 49, think about it, class, hundreds. Class 0 and 3, think about it. Class tenths. So the idea is to read the number after the decimal point and in its entirety. So we read this all as 1, 49. We would read this all as 1, 275. And then we give students a moment to think and then we release them to say what the place value is. Where does this number end? What place value does it end in? So his first name is 49, and his last name, hundredths. Three, last name, tenths. So we're giving students just a moment to think about it before we ask for that choral response. And again, that's where this place value chart will come in really handy because if they were to put those numbers in here, Let's just say you put this in a plastic sleeve and they could just write right over it and write the number four and the number nine and say, oh, yep, it ends in the hundreds. And what coin is that? It's pennies. So if you gave them the chart with something they could write on, it could help those of them that are still struggling to see where these numbers fall. So you'll go through that quick practice. Then you'll go through um, doing the same thing, reading it. And so you would say uh, zero and 49 hundredths. This is 49 what? Class would say 49 pennies. What's its value? 49 hundredths. Class read the number 0 and 3 tenths. This is 3 what? Dimes. So what is its value? 3 tenths. Class read it with me. 0 and 275 thousandths. 275 what? Parts of a penny. So what is its value? 275 thousandths. So the first two are done for you and then as you go to each subsequent one you would drag the money as they say it and then they'd say the value. So uh, when we get here then we're going to read the decimal 0 and 49 hundredths. Boys and girls let's write it as a fraction. What's the numerator? Class, 49. What's the denominator? Class, hundredths. Read the fraction, 49 one hundredths. Read the decimal, 0 and 3 tenths. What's the numerator? 3. What's the denominator? 10. Read the fraction, 3 tenths. So again, it's just about making those equivalents so that students see that we can uh, compare fractions to decimals and vice versa. Then we get to um, the next set of quick practices from lesson And the big difference here is we're just going to talk about, again, reading the chart, specifically how we read numbers after the decimal, and we're including whole numbers now. So things have changed just a bit. So if I read this, we're going to say 5 and 8 tenths. If I read this, we have 4 and 603 thousandths. So what might be the common error? We're going to say 4 and 603 uh, thousandths. 
So we're just this slide is only just to discuss that when we read the number, we don't say 603 because there isn't another decimal point here. The decimal point is what separates the whole numbers and the less than whole numbers. Next, we continue with reading, but now we write them as fractions. 5 and 8 tenths. What would be the numerator? 58. What would be the denominator? Tenths. 5 and 8 tenths is the same as 58 tenths. Boys and girls, read it with me. 4 and 603 thousandths. What would be the numerator? 4,603. Boys and girls, what would be the denominator? 1,000. Boys and girls, read it with me. And we would continue on through that. So this is such a great conversation about noticing that the uh, numerator is larger than the denominator, so we know it's going to be a mixed number. Um, and that's what we just did with fractions. So some of this leads to some really great conversations. Now let's work on lessons 5 to 10. So the place value chart comes back, and now we're talking about patterns they notice of what happens when I move to the right versus what I move to the left, that if I'm getting smaller from dimes to pennies, from purple to orange, what happens when I go from purple to orange on this side? So it's a symmetrical color, and they can talk about the similarities they see there, but then also what is the pattern of going left to right versus right to left? We now use the chart again to help us with comparing decimals. Let's read the decimals aloud. Zero and four tenths. Zero and four hundredths. Which coin would I put under the first decimal? What place does it fall in? Tenths, a dime. What coin would I put here? Class, a penny. Hundredths. What is smaller, hundredths or tenths? Class, hundredths. What is larger, tenths? So zero and four tenths is more than zero and four hundredths. And then we'd go to the next slide. And now we're going to add on to that idea. So if I were to read here, I have 0 and 4 tenths. This is a sample side for you. So if you look here, this is an example. And then um, if you look here, this is an example slide. And then you'll get to the actual examples or the slides to use with students after that. So you have two sample slides here. Let's show it another way. 4 tenths, 4 hundredths. Let's make equivalent fractions. So we, they're both 1 hundredths. So, 4 tenths is equivalent to how many hundredths? What would I multiply 10 by to get 100? 10. Multiply the numerator, we'd get 40. 40 hundredths compares to 4 one hundredths. Is 40 one hundredths more or less than 4 hundredths? We would say more. And then you'd go to your next slide. And you would try it again. Boys and girls, you can also compare two decimals by writing them both to the same decimal place. How can coins help us know what to write? So when we put the coins here, we have 0 and 4 tenths. So that reminds me of what to write on this slide. I'm going to write 0 and 4 tenths. This is 0 and 4 hundredths. So we know that the equivalent to 4 dimes is actually 40 cents or 40 hundredths. 4 pennies is equivalent to 4 pennies. So would I rather have 40 hundredths or 4 hundredths? So now you can see we gave them the same place value. We're comparing hundredths to hundredths. Would you rather have 40 or 4? we'd rather have 40, 0 and 4 tenths, or 0 and 40 hundredths, is greater than 0 and 4 hundredths. 
let's compare. 0 and 3 hundredths compares to 0 and 3 thousandths. Boys and girls, what coin would go here? Pennies. What coin would go here? Parts of pennies. How many parts of pennies or tenths of pennies would be in three pennies? Class, 30. Let's rewrite these. Zero and 30 thousandths, and this would stay the same. Zero and three thousandths. 30 thousandths, it compares to three thousandths. What's our symbol? Class, greater than. 30 uh, thousandths is greater than three thousandths, which means three hundredths is greater than three thousandths. And then we would go to our next slide. So it sounds or feels like a lot to say, but really what you're trying to get them to practice is making these um, with the same place value ending. So this is ending in tenths, this are, excuse me, hundredths, this is ending in thousandths. If we write them ending in the same place value, can we see now which one's greater or which one's less? So you don't have to follow that same scripting. You, you use what works for you. In all of these slides, you can see that Dr. Fusen put, if you have a whiteboard, fill it in. And so this would be one of those exceptions where students could write it down on their whiteboard and then everyone choral responds out loud um, so that students have written down the correct symbol and they have practice um, writing these decimals in another way. But it's not do all of these problems and then we'll go over them together. We still want there to be the choral response everyone reading out loud, and then just decide for yourself what will be your like three prompts or four prompts that you can get used to so you say it the same every time. Of course, you can use the scripting that was put for you on the right side. We get to the next problem. What if we made equivalent fractions? So here, we made them the same place value. We made equivalent decimal uh, in the sense of place value. What if we did the same here? So we have three hundredths. Then we have three thousandths. What goes here? Three hundredths. What goes here? Three thousandths. These are the same. These two are the same. These two are the same. If I want to be able to compare them, we know they have to have the same denominator. In order to have the same denominator, would I choose thousandths or hundredths? Let's choose thousandths. So if I want thousand to be the common denominator, what would I have to do to 100 to get to 1,000? Class, multiply by 10. And I know that I would need to do that to both the numerator and the denominator. This is like multiplying by 1 or 10 tenths. 3 tenths or 3 one hundredths times 10 tenths equals class 30 one thousandths. Let's compare now. 30 one thousandths compared to 3 one thousandths. Class greater than. So you can walk students through that however it best makes sense for you. But again, you're trying to create choral response that creates effic um, efficacy, it creates community, um, it makes us feel like we don't have to be targeted and come up with the answer all by ourselves. Um, and the more they do this, the better they're going to be. So the first couple of days, no, there, it's not going to go as smooth as you want it to, but with repetition, they'll start to get the hang of it. And you can see that we go through all those repetitions again. Let's compare them using uh, the money representation. Let's compare them, um, writing them with the same place value notation. Let's compare them, finding equivalent fractions, and then you repeat. And you can see that you repeat several sets because that's going to take you um, multiple times. And this is from for lessons five through 10. So you have a new set of three slides for five lessons. So by five lessons, they're surely going to have um, a rhythm down, and if you say it the same way every day, it'll start to become routine. So then we get to lesson six, 
and you can see that lesson six has six comparisons of decimal pairs and each one has three slides so just like there has been there'll be three slides in each set um, and you are going to follow the exact same process so identify the coins compare you're going to write them the same place value compare then you're going to write them with this um, equivalent fractions then repeat so you can see that you have all of those continuing on then you get to lesson seven it's the same idea it says um, the lesson number and which pair of decimals below the slide so you can see that this is for h3 okay and then you can see um, those are all h3 then we move and that's the second decimal pair so each decimal pair has us doing three different things so you just have a new set when you get to lesson seven uh, then you get to lesson eight the exact same thing you're going to get another set of three um, slides per day and we get to lesson nine you can see it repeats so all of these things start changing in that you're now not comparing even the same numbers so notice now it's five thousandths and three tenths okay so it does get more complex because now it's not three and three now we have to actually think about the value of those numbers so take a look at those as you get all the way through lesson 10. I hope that helps. If you have any questions about how these run, please reach out in our Facebook group or in uh, our community, and I'm happy to go over them and talk through them once more. Um, but really, this is about choral response and building automaticity and fluency with reading decimals, comparing decimals, and writing equivalent decimals. <music>